Good evening. How is everybody doing? I just wanted to do a little quick video for those individuals who have been just watching what's happening on the news. Watch, you know, turn that stuff off. Turn it off. I even had an associate uh, share a post um, from a, a prominent Bible teacher who was saying, you know what? Um, you know, people need to stop worshiping. They need to stop worshiping Trump. They need to, Trump needs to concede. I, let me tell you something. When it comes to a truth and a, something valid that shapes and affects an entire culture, you can't just stop and put something down, especially when it's questionable, especially when you've got so many people um, I mean, you've got almost 80 million Americans voted for Donald Trump. So to tell people if they perceive an injustice was done, that they just have to let it go and concede, you can't do that because it becomes a pattern. It sets the bar, takes the bar down to a lower level, and it robs people of their hope and their confidence in the system. And so what we have to do is we have to back off and say, you know what, Lord, you've got a process that you need to take this through. And at the end of the day, God will have the last say. Now, here's something that's really important that we get. This, all of this stuff that's going on, you have to keep things in perspective. This is the end time. And when I tell you the end time, I remember as a 10, 11, and 12-year-old sitting around our dining room table with my mother, teaching us the book of Revelations, reading through. We went through, we, every summer, we would go through the book of Revelations, and my mother taught us end-time prophecies. Now, if more parents did that, there wouldn't be so many folks tripping, because what we are witnessing on a daily basis, I mean, like every single day, there is a new prophetic marker that manifests in and it's happening on television. It's happening. Everything is happening. And so when you look at this whole issue, one of the things the scripture said was that in the last days, first of all, this is, we've stepped into it. 2020 was the year that drew a division. It divide, it, it created a dividing line. I heard a pastor say, or a minister say the other day that God removed the fence because there are a lot of so-called Christians and believers who think they can still be liked by their friends think they can be liked by the media, think that they can be liked by all of those entities and still be on the side of the kingdom of God. You can't. You can't. We all will have to choose. And Jesus says that there is a wide gate where a whole lot of folk going to be walking down and there is a narrow gate. And he says there are many that will be going through the wide gate, but there will be few who find the narrow gate. Hi, Linda. Thank you for popping on here. And so what is happening? So let me tell you what's going on. Let me tell you what all of this stuff, this election, this debacle, this vote, all, let me tell you what this is really all about. This is what it's about. This is all designed to determine where the faith line runs. Now, what do I mean by faith line? Jesus said on, I believe it's Luke uh, 18, 8, where he says, when the Lord comes, will he find faith in the earth? In other words, this whole, this realm that we are stepping into will be driven, governed, orchestrated, and run by a higher measure of faith. God is not looking for somebody who's just want, who wants to get up and be a, popu a popular skinny jeans, get your coffee in the foyer church where it's a social event on Sunday morning. No, baby, where we're going, where, where the United States of America is going, where there, there is going to require a level of faith and confidence and walking with the spirit of God that has never been seen in this nation before. There has come a move of God and it's already started. And so so what the first part of that is, I told you guys back in September, we have entered a season where everybody must choose. You must choose which side you're going to be on. You can't just you can't just say, OK, I'm going to be friends with the Democrats, regardless of what they teach, regardless of what they stand for, regardless of how they have declared war on the kingdom of God. And when you do some of the stuff they're doing, you can't you can't stand up and say, mm, you know, we can still be friends. No, you can't. You can't. 
because God is making it very clear. He's making it very clear that his, he, he says there's a sheep nation and a goat nation. So what you're seeing, all of this is, uh, everything that you're witnessing is about where the faith line is. Will you trust God? Will we believe God? Will we look to God and get his, get the witness? Will we hear the word of God? Will we trust the word of God? Because God is like, look, if I said I was going to do something, then you, it's all, it's all our job is to do is to believe it. You just have to believe it. Now, this is the other thing. So the first point is all of this stuff that you're witnessing, it is designed to help you determine where you at. It is to locate you. What side are you on? There is no longer a fence. I heard, I can't remember the past. I, oh, yes. Uh, his name was Chris, Christmas, actually. He says that there is a line that God has removed the line, moved the fence. God took the fence down. So a lot of Christians who've been sitting on the fence, who thinking they can still be friends with the world, be popular and still walk in the kingdom of God and authority. No, you can't. No, you can't. Because the word of God says the people who know their God shall do exploits. So to enter the realm of exploits that is coming, you have to walk by faith. And the word of God says that the just, those who have been justified by Christ, shall live by faith. We live, we walk, we move, we act by faith. So when Jesus said in, uh, in I believe, Luke 8, 18, 8, when the son of man comes, will he find faith in the earth? What he was saying is that the day of my return is approaching. And when he gets here, will he find faith in you? Will he find faith? So what he's looking for, God is saying, look, I just need people to decide what they're going to believe. I need to know. I need you to know. God says, I know what you're going to do, but you need to know. You need to know just like Peter, when Peter told Jesus, I'll never turn my back on you. I'll never leave you, Jesus. I'm going to be right there. You, and it wasn't three hours before he was cussing, saying he didn't know him. Okay. So what we have to determine is God is saying, look, this, this is not about Donald Trump. It's not about an election. It is about God is drawing a line of demarcation and you must decide what side of that line you're going to be on. Are you going to be on the side of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Or are you going to be on the side of people who have declared war on the kingdom of God? There are people who have declared war. War has been declared. The Antichrist is making it known. I am flexing my muscle letting you know I'm about ready. I want, I want to come. I believe that that spirit is four years premature. When you look on Boris Sekinta, when you look at the president, when you look at the timeline, when you look at the prophecies in the scriptures, that, that whole move by the spirit of Antichrist is premature. You know why? Because God, that right there in Matthew 24, 14, there's a line that separates that has to take place. And it is the spreading of the gospel and the great awakening. Now that awakening, the, the, the advance of the Antichrist should not come before the awakening because it will hinder the move of God and it will, it will limit the capacity of the gospel to reach the people God wants to get to, Thomas. So God has an agenda. He has an agenda. God has an agenda, just like the Antichrist has an agenda. Now, there are a lot of people who don't want to believe. I, I don't care. Look, let me tell you something. I don't care if you believe in the second coming of Jesus Christ or not. You just keep believing. Because let me tell you, this is how it works. If I'm wrong and Jesus doesn't come back, I ain't lost anything. I'm prepared to go. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. My goal is to be ready and to make sure everybody connected with me either is ready or or they know what they need to do if they miss the rapture. Those are my two perspectives. I told, I tell people close to me, family, friends, relatives, look, I love you. I don't want you to be left here. When Jesus comes back and takes the church away, I don't want you to be left behind. However, if you choose to, if you find out one day you wake up and a whole bunch of us are gone, and they try to make up all kinds of reasons telling you that aliens, that's why you're looking at people in New York time, they're seeing UFOs, what that, that, that nothing but the enemy trying to create a, trying to create a, um, oh, what's the word, Holy Spirit, trying to create a, a, a mindset so that when the real rapture comes and people disappear, they'll say, oh, 
that was aliens. No, it wasn't no aliens. No, it wasn't no aliens when millions and millions of people, millions and millions of Christians, those people filled with the Spirit of God disappeared. It wasn't no aliens. That was Jesus who did what he said he was going to do. He came back and took his church away. And after he leaves, there will be an entity called the Antichrist who will step into power. Now, at this moment in time, that entity is being restrained. He's being held back. And he's being held back by the presence of the Spirit of God that is alive and in the hearts of the people of God. Okay? But once those individuals are gone, once the people, once the body of Christ is out of here, then the restrainer, which is the Holy Spirit that is inside those people, that body, then once those individuals are gone, there is nothing left to restrain the Antichrist. And he will literally do whatever he wants to do. He will literally do. And then you will, you, and in the scriptures, there's a whole list of things that he's going to do because that his, 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 the one who fuels him will have free play. He will have full reign. That is Satan. That is a demonic entity named Satan. It is a, it is a fallen angel. And he hates God. He hates mankind. He hates everything that looks like God. And since we are created in the image and likeness of our Heavenly Father, Satan hates you. He hates you and he hates me. And so once the church is gone, then his incarnate human being will be possessed by this spirit, by this demonic entity, just like Jesus came in representation of the father. Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the father, the spirit of the antichrist, which is any spirit that hates Jesus and the father who sent him and the Holy Spirit, which represents them. Hi, Beverly. So that's what's going on. So what, what, so what does all this mean? What does it mean, Stella? In light of the fact that, let me recant, what did I say first? I told you guys that this, everybody, people are all talking a whole bunch of smack and noise. Hi, Gloria, about what's going on. And, you know, you know, I, I, all the prophecies said this and we don't believe you. God, did, 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 let me ask you to understand something. Don't be one of the ones that God decides he don't need. Because God decided, when Gideon showed up, got ready to go to battle, he had 32,000 people, 32,000 men going to war. God said, you got too many. He whittled that down to 10,000. He said, you still got too many. We don't need all of them until they ended up at 300. Don't be one of the people God decides that he doesn't need. He look at you and say, oh, I don't need you. You ain't got no faith. You fearful. You scared. You tucking your tail and running just because the circumstances look difficult. This nation, America, is so blessed because we've never had to really fight for anything. We've never had a, as a church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we've never had a real battle. We've been so blessed. We've never had, we've never had an attack, a demonic attack against the body of believers who are Jesus' children, his family, his beloved. We've never had that before. Now that we have it, now, you're going you to find out a whole lot of people who were either social Sunday service attendees. They weren't going to church because they were going to church because that's where their friends were. They were going to church because it was a social event that they got to do and got to be with the people that they loved hanging out with. It wasn't about their relationship with God. And so now that, that little fence that you got to sit on, the fence is gone, baby. It's gone. And so we're in the season now where you're going to have to bow up, show up, speak up, and be who you say you are. And if you don't, you're going to be like Peter. You'll be like Peter. A lot of people are going to be like Peter. At the end of the day, when they're going to they're be like Peter, people say, oh, Jesus, I'm never, yeah, oh, whoa, yeah. And when the rubber met the road, Peter was like, I don't even know him. I don't know him. God, give us the grace. Give us the grace. That's me, too. That's me, too. We've never had it hard in this country. We haven't. We have been so blessed. But the tables are turning because of the heart, the hardened hearts of people. It's turning. And so that comes back down to you. When he comes, will he find faith in you? Will he find faith in me? Will he find? That's what it's about. So first of all, God is looking for faith. He is, Jesus is letting you know, I want you to understand, I'm working up a plan. I don't, I won't come back until my father releases me, but you need to know when I come back, will I find faith in you? So that's the next, and then the next thing is we are on the precipice. 
there has to be a great awakening. I believe that the Biden administration, because not because of Biden, but because of the demonic spirit that's behind it, because of the antichrist agenda that's behind it. Now, you know, it's not about, it's, not, it's nothing against him personally. It's just the spirit that is behind him is in opposition to the spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. The spirit, so that, I, I, so I believe that that spirit has its day, but I don't believe believe that that time is now because God has God has spoken prophetically for generations that there would be a great awakening. I believe that we that this window that God was trying to gift us this window between now and the next four years was a window of time that God is trying to gift G-I-F-T us so that we can spread the gospel. We have a little more time to, to not be a lazy church and get out and really bring the info. Now, look, you can't make nobody except Jesus. You can't, but you, God wants to make sure my prayer is that all of America hear the gospel and have the opportunity. I am praying and decreeing that 300 million Americans will encounter, will have an encounter moment where there will be nothing prohibiting them from their heart, their own heart, their own will, their own mind from accepting Jesus Christ as Lord as he is presented to them in a way that they can receive and understand uninhibited by the forces of darkness so that that individual can make a choice for themselves. We don't want any person to be left behind because they didn't know. We want people that if they're left behind is because they say, no, I y'all take that Jesus. I ain't got, no, I ain't got nothing for Jesus. I don't want Jesus. I don't love Jesus. I don't want though. Let them, let, they can stay here. Let them leave them on here. Let leave them on here. Look, Talk, I'm talk like the country girl that I am. Leave them here because God is saying, I want to take those who are mine, my beloveds, my precious ones, those who have believed in me, those who have trusted in me, those who call upon my name saying, Lord Jesus, I need you. Lord Jesus, help me. Lord Jesus, what is love? Show me what real love is. Let me encounter true love. Touch my heart. Change my life. Save my soul. Those are the ones that this next four years is designed, that God is trying to, was trying to gift us so that we can reach those people, those people. So now here, now I believe that was the will of the father. I believe the will of the father will, will usurp anything, any, any, any agenda that's not consistent with what he desires for mankind. God desires for mankind. He says it is his will that none should perish, but that all should come into the knowledge of repentance. People can't come into knowledge if they haven't heard the gospel in a way that they can receive or understand. Hi, Mary. Hi, Debbie. And so that's what this is about. So number one, when Jesus comes, will he find faith? So this election debacle, you know, a lot of people thought they were, this was just going to happen. Hi, Elisa. That thought this was just going to happen. And, you know, Trump going to get right back in. God said, well, let me just let me just let a little opposition going in there. Let me see how much faith going to be there after it looks impossible. Because see, when God allows people to get to a Red Sea moment, you have no choice. You have no choice but to believe God. You either believe God or you turn around and say, okay, well, you know, we just going to let them step up. We're going to let them rise up. We're just going to let them. No, I'm not saying that the devil is a lie. If God spoke by his prophets and said that he was going to buy us a four-year window, a last four-year window before the timeline as it has been indicated since 19 since May 14th 1948 when the nation of Israel landed back in Jerusalem when they landed back in that territory that's when the clock started ticking and a lot of people say yeah but the word you know the Bible say we don't know the day nor the hour when the Lord's coming back let me explain something to you no, you don't know the day nor the hour because there are 24 time zones on the planet. But he did say, when you see these things happening, this is when you will know that the time of my son's return is near. And so we are literally watching these things happen. A lot of people don't get me in church. Oh, y'all wake up. Wake up. 
because a lot of us don't realize it. Listen, we know they think, I just, they think it's about, it wasn't about Trump. Y'all didn't realize that God put Trump in the White House because he was trying to get his son-in-law, who was a Jewish brother, in position so that he could help set Israel up so that when the church is taken away, Israel will be in position to do what they have to do between the time that the church leaves and the time that Jesus comes back at the Battle of Armageddon. Why do you think all of a sudden all of these nations in these nations that have hate that been saying they hate Israel all of a sudden in the last 24 months all of a sudden now they all want to be at peace with Israel? What did the Bible say? When the world says what? Peace and safety. When the world is crying peace and safety, that's when we know, yeah, that's when you know all hell is about to break loose. Yeah, uh-huh. Why? Because this earth hates Israel because this earth is under, it was, it was the prison camp of Satan, okay? And Israel is a nation of people that has the marker of God on them because of, because of God's relationship with their father, who was Abraham. That was a covenant relationship. It don't matter whether you like it or not. I ain't here trying, you know, if you, I don't care if you like what I'm saying or not. If you don't like what I'm saying, fine, scroll on by, gone, poof, be gone. But I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth because Jesus is coming. Israel is God's time clock. If you Google, you don't believe me, Google the Temple Institute. Google it and see that the very temple that the Antichrist is going to walk in and desecrate, they are working. They are already got all the money together. All the resources are in place to rebuild that temple. That temple will be rebuilt. And there are several different models for how it can happen and when it can happen. That And, I, and I'm just waiting to see, wow, God, it's going to be really fascinating to see how you do this. Because I know you're going to do it. Why? Because you already said it. You said it. So if you church folk, and especially people who brown like me, especially us, get in your Bible and read. It is not the time. Now, there, you know, God will take, God, look, there was an Ishmael and there was an Isaac. But at the end of the day, Isaac was born and he fulfilled the prophecy that was spoken. But there was an Ishmael. Now, I don't know. How this works out, I don't believe, I personally don't believe Biden will step into the White House. And it's not because about, it's not about Biden. It is about the prophetic timeline and what needs to transpire as it relates to Matthew 24, 14. As it relates, and then the, the other things that have been spoken prophetically, not only in scriptures, Jennifer, not only in the word of God, but also by his prophets. So those things will transpire. Now, how they happen, I don't know. It's not my job to tell God how to do what he said he was going to do himself in the first place. It's my job to believe it. So I'm saying, God, if that's what you said, I'm bold enough to believe it. I'm going to stand on your word. I'm going to hold fast to my confession of faith without wavering. I'm a, it, just like the Hebrew boys, you know what? They walked out and they said, well, you know what? We're going to walk on down off up in this fire. We're just going to walk up because we ain't going to bow to your God. We ain't going to bow to your God. I'll never, I will never concede to, a, to any individual who thinks it's okay to kill a baby, to, to kill a baby moments before that baby can be pushed out into the earth as a living, breathing soul of God, gifted by God. I can't do it. I can't do it. Under any circumstances, I can't do it. Because if it offends God, it offends me. And if it matters to God, it matters to me. So what matters to God? That's the thing that matters to God is Matthew 24, 14 window. And there's, a, it, and there's an and. And it says, and the gospel of the kingdom must be preached as a witness. And then the end shall come. So those three little markers, God desires. He says, look, I need to get this done. Because there are still oh, about 1.5 billion people on this planet who haven't heard. And some of them are right here in the United States of America, in this nation, that have never heard the gospel. 
and I am going to contend in the heavens for their right to receive that word, to have access to that truth so they can make an informed decision as to whether they will accept Jesus as Lord or not for themselves. I refuse to back down and to allow the propitiation of an atmosphere that will make the church e to not only make it non-essential, but to make it a non-entity. Right now, that I've heard some prophetic words that the 2021 will be the year of the local church. That looks impossible right now. That looks like people are, how's that going to happen? That most, you know, 95% of the churches have shut down. Well, you know what? There's this little word called revival. When revival hits, it's by the spirit of the living God. And when the spirit of God moves, nothing and nobody can shut it. When the spirit of God moves, when the spirit of God comes on, when he comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard against anything and all opposition. So get ready. I don't know how God is going to move, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I can feel it. I can feel it in my spirit just like I can feel this air in my lungs, there is come a move of God upon this planet and millions. People are going to be walking down the streets, weeping, going, I don't know what's wrong. I just feel like I need to be saved. I don't, I don't know what is, I don't know what this is. And, and some believe, random believer is going to walk by and says, oh, that's nothing. Oh, wow. That's the spirit of God. Come on. Let me tell you about Jesus. And they're going to get saved. And it's going to be happening all over the place. People are going to walk down. Let me tell you, believers are going to walk down. Down the halls of hospitals, uneven, not even knowing and not even aware of what they're carrying. And they're going to walk down and all of a sudden people in hospital beds are going to start getting up completely healed and delivered and set free. It's going to happen. I'm telling you, I have seen it. I have seen it. Now, what level of participation you're going to have with that? I can't answer for you, but I can tell you, Jesus said when he comes in the earth, will he find faith in you. Can you believe that? Can you can you actually bear to think that God is big enough to do something like that? That he can not only do it with somebody like Charles Finney or Smith Wigglesworth, one or two people a hundred years ago, or can he do it in mass upon millions upon millions upon millions of believers all at one time, simultaneously in this earth? And he can, can you believe that? I'm bold enough to say, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. My God, bad. He's bad. Oh, he's a bad mama jama. Oh, yes, Lord. I'm so excited. I'm so excited, Diana. Hi, I'm so excited. I'm excited because he, his, he will show himself strong. Look, it's gonna, God's going to do something. Now, I don't know how he's going to do it, but I can tell you this. When God does something, he does it in a way to get him the glory. When God gets him the glory, he's going to, so you ain't, it ain't going to happen. Any, all them court cases, they can file court cases till they all fall over and turn purple. But the court cases aren't going to do it. They can keep doing that. They can, the, the, you know, the, the legislature, all of these processes do, they can do all of that. When God moves, God is going to move in a way that the whole earth will look and say, wow, only God could have done that. And that awareness is going to be a catalyst for a move across this planet of the spirit of God globally. The whole earth is watching the United States. And just like the, the children of Israel who got to the Red Sea, people on the other side of the Red Sea, the nations on the other side of the Red Sea were like, what in the world? These Israelites and left Egypt and they had got to the Red Sea and then all of a sudden the waters parted and the children of Israel ran through on dry ground. And as if that wasn't enough, here comes Pharaoh coming up the rear saying, thinking, thinking, you have to be crazy to see that either you Thinking that the waters, that your God opened the door, opened those, that wall of water, and you get to run through too. So either an arrogant spirit was on him, or he was just flat out stupid, or arrogant, or proud. Well, I don't know which one it was. But all I know is God said, hey, Faith, come on. Come on down here between these two big walls of water. I got a little something, something. I think you need a shower, Pharaoh. I think, I think you need a bath. And what happened? So Pharaoh and his proud, arrogant self went through the walls of water. And the children of Israel, God had already told them. He said, the enemy you see right now, he said, after today, you are not going to see them anymore. 
and they didn't, other than a bunch of chariots and soldiers washed up on the shore, dead and gone, Pharaoh and his army. So how's God going to do it? I don't know. I don't know. I can tell you this. Just like God needed to get the children of Israel on the other side of the Red Sea, and he did it by means that no one had anticipated, God needed the children of Israel to get to the other side. They did, he did not need them to stay on that side of the Red Sea. They had to go through. God needs to get his church, those sheep that he is separating from the goats right now, those people who are on this side, 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 who are standing for righteousness, who are standing, who are not standing back and saying, mm, I just can't believe anybody would have any kind. Who is, what do people sing about? About human sacrifices and children being killed and I just just I just can't believe that I'm like are you stupid do you honestly think that the gods of Baal and Molech who sacrificed children 500 a thousand years 2,000 years ago do you think those demons just poof and went away that they just vanished they're still here they're still here they're still here and God is watching. Do you honestly think that those same demons that were here then, that are here now, that they're just going to be here and they're not going to find it? You, don't, you, think, it's, you think it's just something, just, just something, just, I don't know what happened to them. 800,000 children in this country go missing, disappear, and they just gone? You think God don't see all of that? Y'all better wake up. Wake up. Because Jesus said, when I come, will I find faith? He said, because I just need somebody to agree with me that just like Pharaoh killed those babies trying to kill Moses, just like, just like uh, just the, same, the same demon that killed those babies is the demon that think it's okay to kill babies now. It's the same spirit. It's the same demon. And that's why you got to choose what side you're going to be on. And that's why you can't just think you can't, that the fence is gone. There's no fence anymore. You got to choose sides. And when you choose sides, you're going to have to stand. And you're going to have to make it known what you believe. Whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. So that's what this is about. Forget Trump. It ain't about Trump. It's about Israel. It's about the time clock. It's about the Temple Institute. It's about the rapture. It's about the second coming. It's about the great awakening. It's about the outpouring of God's spirit, according to Joel chapter 2. It's about all of that. That's what it's about. It's about Jesus coming again after he raptures the church, takes the church away to what is called the marriage supper of the Lamb, an event that should take about seven years. And at the end of that seven years, he will return again to fight against the Antichrist and all of the armies that will be coming against one tiny itty bitty nation called Israel. And Jesus is going to show up and kick their butts for Israel himself. And know what? Those people who are his will be in the clouds in that battle with him. So that's what all of this is about. It's a setup. It's a setup. It's a setup. And so if, if this election stuff happens in a way that shortens the window, then that means, I don't know, maybe that to me that might mean, well, maybe the Lord going to come on back a little bit, a little, as we say in the country, a little bit more sooner than we anticipated. Or if I need to speak in a vernacular that the average American Caucasian can understand, perhaps Jesus will be returning at a more expeditious window of time than we have anticipated, a little sooner than we were looking for. But at any rate, either way, he will be returning soon. You get it? You get it? Okay. So I said my piece. I want you guys, I don't care what, I don't care whether it's Franklin Graham, I don't care if it's Beth Moore, I don't care who talking smack, all of them, they, look, listen, God has an agenda, nobody is worshiping Trump, most folk who are watching this are wondering how God, and I'm talking about people of faith, they're wondering how God is going to set up things according to what he said to accommodate the timeline as we look at the prophetic markers that have been placed in the word of God. 
That's really what people are doing. And most people of faith are looking at it going, God, I, it's not that they don't believe. It's that their curiosity, like me, my curiosity is peak going, man, God, I don't know how you going to kick butt on this one, but somebody finna get a beat down. That's, what, that's what's going to happen. Somebody is about to get a beat down. Because God said, he, he, and this is the last thing I'm going to say, I'm going to be through y'all. This is the other thing that I think that fascinates me about God that I have learned. When he, when I, one thing I've, I remember years ago, probably almost th over 30 years ago, God spoke to me and told me, I'm going to teach you how to trust me. And what he was saying to me then was, I'm going to show you what my real nature is like. And once you understand my nature, then certain things as it relates to trust won't be an issue for you because you'll know it's not his nature to do that. It's not God's nature to stick somebody out there, let them work their butt off, let them do all their part and then he just disappear walk away and leave them on the front line that's just not his nature it's not his nature to set something up to tell people to put it out there and to have and then i have one two three four but literally hundreds even thousands of prophets saying the same thing okay and then all of a sudden god says well you know we're not gonna do it this way that's just not his nature but he will stand back and wait a long time to allow faith to arise in the earth and to allow those who are truly filled with faith to manifest themselves and to show up and to let their faith walk on the water. When they get to walking on the water, that's when you know Jesus has showed up. Yes, because you're walking on the water with him. So how it's going to happen, I don't know. But I tell you this, Jesus is looking for faith in you. Okay, this is about the prophetic timelines. Jesus is coming soon. There is a rapture. You need to be ready for it. You need to be prepared. Your children need to be prepared. They need to know one of two things. If they have not accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they need to know what do I do if I miss the rapture? Get them some training materials, store up some food for them in, they, in your house. I don't know what you got to do, whatever the Lord tells you to do to prepare. Prepare for them while you go on to the marriage supper of the Lamb. You need to tell, you need to go ahead and set it up for them. Because if they don't accept Jesus and they are left behind, they're going to have a, a hard road to hope. And that's it. That's all I got to say. I'm through. I'll be on here again in the morning for my regular time. But that was just kind of burning in my spirit. Ah, it's burning in my spirit. I don't care what Franklin Graham do. I don't care what Beth Moore say. It don't matter. Because they don't, they're not speaking, that, that, what they're saying does not agree with the truth that God has spoken in my heart. I know what I've heard. I know what I've, I know what's been there. And I haven't heard God say anything different. Because Matthew 24, 14 got to come. And we need, we need the atmosphere in this nation preserved for the spread of that gospel for these next four years. I, now, I believe four years from now. It'd be about time for Joe Biden if he's still around. But if God has a different way, however he does it, the whole world is going to know it was God, not Trump, not the Senate, not the House of Representatives, not the Supreme Court, none of that. None of those will be a way. God is going to do it in a way that everybody will look up and say, oh, wow, there is a God in America. There is a God in America and his son is Jesus and I need to accept Jesus now. I need to receive him now. 300 million Americans are going to say that. They're going to have an encounter moment like that and they're going to be able to make a decision for Jesus Christ themselves. Uninhibited, uninhibited by the kingdom of darkness. They will be able to choose Jesus on their own, unobstructed. That is my prayer. That is my decree. That is where I put my faith. And I will stand on it until I look at Jesus and say, hey, that's what you put in my heart. And that's what I held to. All right, y'all. I'm going to get off of here and let y'all go to bed. It's tight. Ooh, ooh, yes, Lord. It's a little late. Let me go and take myself to bed. I'll talk to you guys in the morning. Better Life with Stella, 10 o'clock Friday morning. Till then, you make it a terrific night. Bye-bye.